We touched on a couple of the issues that are important to consider when it comes to figuring out what is a reasonable number of waves per hour or waves per set, sets per hour. I want to just drill into that a little bit. So what kind of considerations in terms of safety, again, we covered a couple, are there any other angles, user experience, the ability and skill of the user. And one thing we haven't really touched on yet is the client's business model. How does that influence um, decisions about wave frequency? And Tom, if, if you wouldn't mind. Yeah, I think from a business model perspective, what focuses on that quality of the wave, the characteristics of the wave, what's being delivered. You, you can have a, call it a mass market wave, which is your intermediate and beginner, or you can target, call it the advanced rider. Now there's, there's pluses and minuses to all these, and that's where it gets into the, you know, capabilities and programming that the specific operator wants and the location that they're, they're in. If you're in a very high demographic surf zone that has a lot of high profile guys that can know what they're doing, well, then you can target these really, let's say, you know, specialty barrels and, and, and with, with hot longer periods. And that requires more time because you're, you're dealing with a lot more water in that wave crest. And, and as a result, it takes just the physics of, of how this stuff works, unless you're going to, you know, you, you, you require that time, which means more interval between each wave. So that gets to the business model, then well, that wave is going to have to cost more money. And, and so it's this real interesting, which we haven't developed, recognize we're right in the startup of this whole process. And that's why I think it's very encouraging that we have such a group together, you know, to be able to at least have these conversations because it's, it's one of these things that there's, you know, I remember starting in the water park industry, you know, it's just like dog eat dog. And the, the reality is we got plenty of time to figure this stuff out. And of course, there people will fall by the waysides, but you know, that's the nature of business, just like in a business model for water parks. So I think there's a lot of different opportunities and we're going to be exploring it kind of together and we'll see which ones work. And I really can't tell you what's going to work right now. I have my ideas, but let's let's kind of develop it and see. Yeah, awesome. And I, I think that's a really great perspective, Tom. It's, it's, a, it's a wide open playing field. There's plenty of space for lots of, of different uh, ideas. And it, it is really encouraging to see them when coming together and being experimented with. Um, Aaron, would you mind going next and kind of covering what you think some of those um, considerations are when it comes into uh, how many waves you're pushing through and how that influences business models and vice versa? Yeah. No, I think, again, for, for us, um, the there's a wide range of needs, you know, in wherever the location you'll have peak periods where you want to maximise the crowd and particularly the Northern Hemisphere with the summers uh, and then other times where you don't want to or need to produce as many waves. So you need to be able to dial up um, that range. And I guess in our case, we look at it this way. We've got you can produce no waves and have a still water lake for sailing and swimming and all sorts of activities. And then you can have low productivity depending on your crowd winding that right up to the maximum for those peak periods. So by having different intervals, um, from you know nothing right through to you know 45 seconds between sets, you've got this incredible range, um, and at the same time, uh, I guess in our case we're running simultaneous variety because you've got you know up to five different levels of waves happening at the same time. It means that particularly in those peak periods you can uh, fit those different abilities uh, in. But for us again from a safety perspective, running sets of five or six waves is really where we're at. We don't want to run more than that at a time because that allows for safety in the, in, in the lake as well as you know, maintaining quality and the user experience. And I guess this, this is going to evolve with all the techs, but, but our view is that you'll have groups of five or six um, rotating around those positions on the break rather than all having a paddle battle to get out to position. And that allows for a, a, an easier rhythm as well. Um, and I guess another key point is, is the user ability. Um, so we're taking the view that people need to graduate from the intermediate to qualify to get to the advanced wave, then qualify to get to the expert level, 
etc uh, on their on their craft and that way they've got a pass then which becomes a global pass for, for surf lakes at least they can they can have that so that's that's going to become more and more important uh, is to make sure that people actually have that um, proven ability to handle the waves because you know the waves can be quite large and powerful and you can't just push people onto anything so hopefully that covers covers your question but from a business model um, we're seeing everything from you know almost a private property play through to you know mass production uh, uh, for large crowds um, and I guess one key point for us is that you can actually hire out a private break, have a competition on another one and have it open to the public at the same time. So there's a degree of flexibility there for the clients. Great. Thanks. Uh, some <clears throat> really interesting um, operational ideas in there as well. Um, Baptiste, um, could you take us through this next? I, I know you already kind of alluded to the ability to, to scale up and down production according to seasonality. Um, what other issues do you think uh, come into play when it comes to wave frequency? Um, well, first of all, what we tend to do when we, 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 and I think it's the same for every single one of us here, when we start talking to an investor and, and, uh, uh, and talking about operation, the first thing we start with is pretty much what is the consumer experience you want to offer? Because obviously you have the levels, uh, the level of surfers, you have the uh, the level of the waves themselves. But to start with is okay, your best surfer surfing the best wave. If he's gonna buy a one hour surfing uh, uh, session, do you want to offer him 12, 15, 18 waves to surf? That's our first, let's say, uh, item which is obviously important. Because then what we, what we do is, okay, if you want to offer X surfers at a time at this level of surfing that wave, then we'll adjust, uh, uh, obviously, the interval between waves to make sure that they're safe, to make sure that the wave is of premium quality, regardless how difficult the wave is. And all that sets a, a business potential on an hourly basis. And what we do then is we, we group the waves per set but it's not really to uh, to have the currents go to, uh, go softer again, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's more than to make sure that from an OPEX perspective, we smooth the electricity consumption across the entire hour. So what we try to do is because the business model is so new, because the interval changes so much between uh, uh, surfing abilities and surf and wave levels. Let's start with what we want to offer to the consumers and then use all the flexibility of the uh, pneumatic systems and the software to make sure that then the system offers exactly what is uh, uh, promised to the consumer at the most efficient uh, uh, cost per wave. Excellent. Thanks. Thanks for that, Baptiste. Um, Sean, would, would you like to take up this question next? Well, actually, this question could take an entire session all of its own. Uh, it really is quite an inter you know complex one, and we're lucky now that we've learned a huge amount from you know five five uh, operations, and we're improving our operational offer and our, our our wave offer as we as we add more facilities. But I guess there's two or three things that are important. First of all, as as Baptiste said, it's you know how many waves do you want to offer the surfer so that they get uh, value for money, value for time, and come out leaving. Uh, exhausted but wanting more and really want to come back and return and and do you need to vary the number of waves per session depending upon the level of the group you're in so we started in, in first when we opened in Bristol we had like two different types of sessions going in the reef uh, and sort of advanced and expert and very quickly we realized that people's uh, ability levels people tend to sort of overestimate their ability level a bit and people were falling off and, and causing a slowdown in the take up of waves and so now we're in many of our facilities we're adding as many as four or five different levels of, of uh, a session that people can sign up to go go into and there and we have sort of set an absolute minimum of 10 to 11 uh, great waves of 13 to 15 seconds long that everybody can get in their surf session so could you imagine if you're doing if you want to do 300 to 400 barrel waves uh, an hour knowing that those people that are surfing those waves are very good and won't necessarily fall off as much on takeoff and so on 
Therefore, with three to 400 waves uh, in that session per hour, everyone is going to get between, if you have 30 or 40 guys in the water, people in the water, everyone is going to get a minimum of 10 to 11 waves. So that's what we do. But when we run an intermediate session, we say, well, let's try and give people 12 to 13 waves because they're likely to fall off in two or three. But at the end of the session, everyone will have had at least 10 or 11. Can we soften the takeoff of even our most challenging uh, surf sessions? So in fact, in Switzerland now, and I'm, I'm going to see it next week, um, the takeoff for the barrel wave is actually easier than, than, than the takeoff for some of the, the more turn and vertical waves. So we've tried to introduce so that everybody can have a go and try and get a barrel uh, by having an easy takeoff. So those, th those are the things that come into it. And then finally, with regards to frequencies, 100% you just, you know, in peak hours, you want to get as many people through as possible. You dial up the frequency, maintaining quality. You can't destroy the quality of the wave, but you put as many as in so that everybody's the customer satisfaction is still good. And if you're doing, you know, 400 barrels an hour, that means you can have 40 uh, surfers in, 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 in the reefs. If you're doing uh, 600 to Malibu waves, then you can go up to maybe we'll have 50 and everybody is still getting plenty of uh, waves in addition to the beginners that are in the base. Excellent. And I, I, I do love the idea of the, the easy roll in to the barrel. <laughs> um, looking forward to trying, to trying that one on. That's great.